Hi, and welcome to the Arts District Podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Georgia. And it's episode 37 this week. Yep. Um, we're in Georgia's place in Toronto, our new place again, and uh, it's a beautiful day out. Started a long weekend. Mm-hmm. We are heading up north after this. Yep. I feel like we do that like every other episode. It's like, we're going up north this weekend. Yeah. It's a long weekend. It's so, like, wow, privileged. Yeah, really. <laughs> and we're, yeah, here there's like leaves on the trees and we'll go there and it'll be yeah almost winter again. Yeah. No, I was up there two weeks ago. It's not bad. Okay. It's actually nice. Good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll try to keep it short and sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight, Sunday night, well, today is Saturday, but tomorrow night, when this is on, it's also the night of the Billboard Music Awards, so if you're into watching that, cool. tune in. I think, like, Britney Spears is performing, which is Whoa. weird, because who has seen her perform in a while. Yeah. Um, That's from the past. Yeah. Bunch of people, so it could be interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't generally generally watch that no. that uh, show, but maybe I will. We'll see. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, my brief little note is that BB King died on. I Thursday. have that too. Yeah, that was my second point there. Sad, eh? Sad. Yeah. But he, I mean, eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there have been times over the last like five ten years when I've been like, oh right, he's not dead. Yeah, and I mean, he probably in his youth he dabbled in things you know maybe i don't know so yeah Yeah. 89 is good for anybody let alone somebody with that lifestyle yeah and to still be playing and yeah like at that age incredible and so many great stories about him you know he seemed like a really nice guy Mm -hmm. nice man yeah his he was like one of my early cds i had like a best of yeah so he became rest in peace Peaced. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, um, and I, you sent me that article the Toronto Star posted about Ormondante feuding with Way Home and Burles Creek and Boots and Hearts mm-hmm. because they don't want people trampling on their land and, yeah. and uh, you know, making that whole country, rural lifestyle into something rowdy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's kind of silly because I went through some of the comments on it too, and mm-hmm. there are people saying like, "Oh, they they just don't want this like beautiful land changed into like this venue that's gonna be noisy and stuff." But that sort of is an abandoned like car racing yeah yard. Like it was never pristine. Like yeah, it was always wonderful kind of an land. Yeah, and it was noisy. Because they were racing cars there and stuff. Yeah. So these people are kind of complaining about nothing. I kind of, like, I see where they're coming from. If I lived, like, I know there's a couple of houses right along that road, like, right across the street. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you lived on there and you were a little bit older, like, in your 60s, it might seem like a bit of an intrusion. But at mm-hmm. the same time, like... It's two weekends of the year. Yeah, it's two weekends. I get there's a little bit of setting up beforehand that might be kind of loud and annoying. But it's going to add so much Mm -hmm. to that part of Ontario and you know it'll create so many opportunities for people and Mm -hmm. it should be seen as a good thing yeah you know you can always move I'm not saying you need to move but like you know it's two weekends out of the summer Mm -hmm. you know yeah it just seems like they're making a huge deal out of it when it doesn't need to be that huge of a deal exactly now there is still like I think some things need to be passed through. Yeah. Like, it sounds like everything is not all clear for these festivals yeah. to happen yet. So that's But they're a still worrisome. going ahead and like setting things up. It's like, okay, what if the plug gets pulled? Yeah. But so, I guess they have to. Because they even said that like sometimes these things don't get signed until six months after the festival's already taken place. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, I guess they just go ahead and. Right. Unless somebody comes and says, excuse me, you know. Mm hmm. That's illegal. You can't set up here. But we'll see. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. So looking forward to it. That's going to come up really quick. Yeah, they posted something like 74 days or something recently. So, exciting. Hopefully it happens. It's going to be a busy summer. Yeah, it is. Um, Yeah, okay, so that was all my quick points. Okay. You want to go first or you want me to? Um, I can go and start with what I've got. I've got a couple things. Okay, sure. I wanted to update on the... Toronto Comic Arts Festival, or TCAF, as they were referring to it. TCAF. Um, yeah. It was really good. It was so much more than I was expecting. Can I look through um, that? Yeah, sure. There 
was the sort of great hall in the Toronto Reference Library, which is a cool library, by the way. Like, there's yeah. a big open space, and then the floors, you can look down on the main floor from right. all the other floors, yeah, yeah. which is really cool. Um, so that was full, both on the first floor and second floor, with all these comic artists and publishers and stuff like that. So again, I've talked about this before, I tend to get overwhelmed. Like, if you haven't done research and know exactly who you want to go look at, it's like insane Mm -hmm. and it was packed with people i think i posted a photo and showed footage in last week's episode one picture yeah (laughs) one picture um yeah so it was really busy but i didn't realize that all of the speakers were free like it's it's a totally free event so i went and i saw i saw um four or five talks so i saw mark bell and kate beaton Mark Bell I was not familiar with. They're both Canadian. But Kate Beaton I know because she did the Hark a Vagrant. Um, There's a book, but it started as webcomics. So they're historical comics. And some of them are really, really funny. Like she did a history degree and then started doing these comics based on them. They're really funny. There's a book. You can get it at the library. I know that the Aurelia Public Library has it. Um... And then I also saw a talk on the art of the travel log, which had a few different comic creators, including Lucy Nisley. Um, They were all sort of talking about their process and how they go about traveling and making these things about them, whether they do it while they're traveling or do it in hindsight looking back. That Mm -hmm. was really cool. And then I saw um, Noelle Stevenson, whose work I I mentioned last week I was not super familiar with, Um, but it turns out she does even more than I had thought. She started out doing a webcomic called Nimona, and then the book of that was launched at TCAF this year, so it's online, but you can also get a hard copy of it now. And she also does Lumberjanes, which turns out was like a New York Times bestseller. It's like yeah, you mentioned young, that. young adult comics based around like this group of girls at a camp. That's cool. Yeah, and she also does, she's, like, writing for um, cartoon TV shows. So nice. She's, like, really young and has this, like, huge career. It's wow. amazing. And it all pretty much started on Tumblr. She started doing fan art, and then she got into doing It is kind of a niche. comic thing. So, like, if you are good at it, and you find a way to apply it that's no one's really done, then yeah. there's definitely room to... Mm-hmm. to go with that yeah so she seemed really cool and they went to truth and intimacy in graphic memoir which was another really good talk with a bunch of different comic artists talking about writing about your life nice you know and the challenges of that and then i went to lucy nisley and penelope bago i hope i said her last name right penelope is french and she's actually like super popular in france yeah she has like a blog and does comics in starting in magazines and then getting into books and has just done her own like fiction book um but yeah she's like the youngest knight france has she's only like 30 and she's been knighted oh, that's crazy. how popular she is wow yeah. and she's, nice. she's she's a comic artist you know um so that talk was also really good did yeah. you go both days yes yeah wow did you buy anything i did and I was going to let you talk about your thing before I talk about Okay, I can do that. Sure. Um, okay, so last week I said I was going to talk about Ali and I Shakes. Um, a couple episodes ago I mentioned that they were coming out with a new album called Sound and Color. And I mentioned that when it came out maybe I would do an album review. I haven't had time this week to give it a thorough listen to go mm-hmm. into detail with each song. So I'm just going to give you an album overview of... Um, what I thought about it and yeah I guess on a scale of 1 to 10 I'd probably put it at a 7.5 pretty good 10 pretty being good. like I can't live without this album it's very good um so it's their second studio album since 2012's Boys and Girls and I really enjoyed Boys and Girls I thought what a great debut album that there were so many solid songs on that um on that CD this one uh, and I wanted to mention this about the names of their CDs. So you have Sound and Color, Boys and Girls, like the hmm. something, ampersand, something. Right. I don't know. It's just something I noticed. It was like a theme. I'm, I'm wondering if their third album is going to be something and something. You know, mm-hmm. could be nothing. Could be something. I pre- appreciate your use of ampersand. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Doing that for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so Sound and Color was released on April 22nd of this year. 
No, 21st. Wow. Um, it's 12 songs long, and I found that at times it felt kind of long. Mm. Um, just because, like, with Boys and Girls, the songs were... It was a good mix, the way they laid it out on the album. Like, it was... You'd go, like, slow, you'd go high, and it was like a roller coaster kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, there are a handful of, like upbeat ones and there's a lot of kind of moderately paced slow Mm. tracks which is cool but sometimes like for me listening to it I find I would skip through I'd listen to it halfway and it's like okay like this is how it's gonna be the whole thing like I don't want to listen to it Mm. time and place maybe mood Mm -hmm, um still great though like um one of the things I noticed about the overall vibe of the record was, and I've said this before about another record or song, very spacey, lots of lots of space and like depth, almost like when I think of the songs that I hear a lot on the radio, like those super catchy pop songs, I I call those one dimensional songs because everything's just right there in your face, you know, mm-hmm. you hear everything kind of flat and it is what it is. Whereas the songs on Sound and Color, you can like feel depth. Which is weird. It's like they're 3D songs. That's mm. that's what I would call them, if that makes any sense. If you cool. can kind of imagine what that would sound like. Um, yeah, you get a sense of air pockets. And it's just interesting. Because, mm. yeah, I don't know. It's it's layered nicely. Um, definitely a little bit more experimental than Boys and Girls. And a lot of bands do that with their second record. You know, They want it to sound enough like it that they won't lose their fans. But they also don't want to make the same record twice Mm -hmm. so they play around a little bit more with with this album and that's that's cool um yeah and you'll hear that it's easily you know recognizable when you start listening to this um just different sounds and just different it's just like yeah it just sounds different um again i mentioned this before i love Brittany howard she's got one of those voices that she she can sound like vulnerable and sweet and at the same time, you know, a couple seconds later sound totally like aggressive and strong and, mm. you know, just such a versatile singer. It's just great tone. Like it's such a distinct voice that she has. Love it. Um, she's still pretty young too. Like I think she's like only in her late twenties wow. or like mid twenties. Um, yeah. And a couple weeks ago when I mentioned that they were coming out with this new album, I've said the single was a song called Don't Wanna Fight. We played a clip of it, so I'm not going to play a clip for this episode. If you want, you can just go to iTunes and buy it. <laughs> that would be great. Um, that song, I find, isn't really cohesive with the rest of the album. It's it's your typical pop song. It's the it's the single. It's your candy. Like, mm-hmm. it's catchy. Um, but it's really the only song on the album that I've been able to really gather so far that sounds that way. So... I mean, yeah, I guess I I can understand why they picked it as the single, but had they picked another one that captured more of what the album sounded like, yeah, I don't know. Right. Maybe yeah. they would have had different sales, because I know this was their first, I mean, out of the two, this was their first, like, number one album. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think I, think I read that right. I didn't write it down, but I feel like that sounds familiar. Um, yeah, um... The songs are pretty laid back, um, less traditional pop than the songs on Boys and Girls, which are, they're not like super poppy, but there's a lot of pop elements to those songs. Um, and I thought that the title of the album, Sound and Color, was very appropriate for the vibe and the feeling that you get from the songs. Cool. Um, and yeah, for those of you that have never really listened to Alabama Shakes, definitely start with Boys and Girls. I mean, obviously. Um, their, their sound is very southern, blues rock Kind of lo-fi, like garage bandy sound, um, good quality, but it's got that lo-fi, yeah, garage band sound, which is cool, you know. And it, I guess that's kind of trendy. Yeah. Or right. it was like two years ago, like you had Best Coast doing it, and okay. people playing around with that lo-fi sound became trendy. Now I guess it, people are still doing it, but whatever. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, so. I still need to give it a good listen. Sometimes, like, with certain albums, it takes me, like, a month to really get into it. And others, it's, like, the first listen I love. And this one is one of those ones where I I need to spend more time, you know, just sitting there listening to it and really paying attention to the words and, like, just the movement of it. 
So, uh, yeah, but I do, I do like that it's different than boys and girls, but I like boys and girls more. Okay. <laughs> Picking favorites. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Like, you can't like everything someone does. No. And it, this album has had great, like, response and, you know, uh, some great reviews. So, mm-hmm. they did something right. Yeah. Okay. Smell my flavor. Look forward to listening to them more, because I definitely sort of, like, have an idea and know mm-hmm. their sound a little bit, but I haven't really listened to yeah. them, you know? I was starting so. to kind of forget about them, because it took them two years to put this album out, and two years nowadays is a lot, whereas, like, back time. in the 90s, it was, like, four years would go by before somebody put out a new oh, album. Yeah. So you really had time to write good songs and, and work, on, work on it. Mm-hmm. Now it's so fast, and the right. quality has gone down, mm-hmm. which sucks, but... Cool. New challenge. Yeah. Yeah, so, there you go. So... Sound and color. Yeah. I... This is related to what I was just talking about with TCAF. Um, I was able to pick up another of Lucy Nisley's books. If you remember a few weeks ago, I talked about Relish, Mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. And that's sort of more of a graphic memoir where she's looking back over her life and specifically her experience with, like, family and food and stuff, which she has, like, food writers in her family. Because there's recipes in there, right? Yeah. So I picked up An Age of License, which is more of a travel log from her. She mentioned it a lot in the two talks that I saw her speak at, so I thought, why not? Um, I really would have liked to have been able to get this at TCAF and have her sign it and stuff, but she sold out on Saturday, so I wasn't able... Yeah, so that's awesome, but I wasn't able to get it, so I ended up walking from the reference library down Young Street to... um, the Eden Center, and getting this at the Indigo there. You finished it? Yep, I finished it, and I read halfway through it again this morning. Like, wow. you can read through these books so quick. Um, I love new books. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, she, uh, yeah, so I sort of, between these two books, I've seen sort of a range of what she's done. I don't know if she's published any fiction so far, but um, seeing the sort of memoir side and seeing the travelogue side has been cool. There's sort of a difference there. In this, she was 27. She's, like, living in New York City. She's sort of finished college recently and is supporting herself as a comic artist. And, um, yeah, in the fall, she gets the opportunity to do a bunch of traveling. She's invited to speak at a comic festival in Norway, and that sort of sets off the whole trip. So she first goes to Norway, and then to, I wrote down all the places. Then she goes to Stockholm, um, Berlin, Paris, and then sort of southern in France, back to Paris, and then home. This is so cool. And, uh, yeah, so she's sort of, like, initially between relationships, but meets someone, and it's sort of all about this time in your life when there's a lot of freedom, um, and also about traveling and stuff like that, so... It's it's good. I enjoyed it. It's not so much about food, which I'm a little bit sad because I enjoyed all the food talk in Relish, but yeah. I also really enjoyed the travel in this. And she's like, it's not just about the travel. It's a lot about her experience and what she's going through and sort of the time in her life, which is similar yeah. to like the time in our life. Yeah, you know? no, that's awesome. How yeah. many books does she have? Uh, It talks a little bit about, there's a couple more. French Milk, Relish, An Age of License. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, that seems cool. I think there's a couple more than that. The back of this book, I don't know if I agree with it, but they call it Eat, Pray, Love for the Girls' Generation. Like the TV show Girls. And it's like, I would not say this is anything like Girls. Yeah. I think that maybe they mean for the generation who is the age that watches Girls. Yeah, probably. But I thought that was kind of a weird comparison. I'd say definitely more significantly closer to Eat, Pray, Love yeah. than to Girls. Interesting. Um, That's cool. I'm but yeah, that one day. I really I like this. travelogues. Yeah. Something about it's so inspiring hearing about other people's adventures. Mm-hmm. Just makes you want to get go. out. I'm going to New York City at the end of July. Right, you told booked me. Booked my little bus ticket. So Excellent. I'm going to look into it, see if there's anything going on at the Museum of Natural History or any of the cool galleries mm-hmm. or any shows. I definitely am going to go see some live music. Yeah. Um, Hit up the MoMA. Yeah. Hey, do you remember on our music trip when we went to the B.B. King like restaurant thing on um, 
it was Mother's Day, and it was like this gospel brunch. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I had forgotten about that. Speaking of BB King. Yeah, you're right. That was so fun. I remember Emma and I just like dancing yeah. to like these gospel singers. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, that was really good. Yeah, so oh, for we'll do something that. like that. Because when we went, I wasn't old enough to go to any of the like the bars to hear mm-hmm. to hear music. I really wanted to go to Birdland. Have a martini or something like like yeah. sophisticated and yeah, hear some jazz. Couldn't and, go. Yeah, so I definitely want to do that this time around. I'm really excited, and I will podcast my way through it. Yeah, or take notes at least. Excellent. And I'll pull out my camera, and be like Lauren, live on location. You know, do it. <laughs> we'll figure wait. that out when the time comes. So live vicariously through your trip. You can do a travel log. Yeah, I wish I was better at like writing like that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get into it. It's hard. It is. Yeah. Some people are so good with words, like, like I, I like writing songs, but and I love to write things like that too. But oh. like, some people just have a knack. Word. Sorry, the camera stopped. Continue my thought. Some people just have a knack for like describing something so perfectly that you can like, it's tangible. Mm-hmm. You know, I love that. Yep. So, yeah. All right. Sorry about that camera mishap late in the game, yeah. but. Uh, Sun is shining. And we're going to hit the road. Yeah, we're going up north, so enjoy your long weekend. Yes. Stay safe. Next week we will see you for episode 38. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. Gunter. I don't know why I like that name. Gunter? Yeah. <laughs> Said with like a Danish accent. Yeah. Gunter. Please name your first child that. Gunter. Mama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> okay.